Welcome to StoryFlix. In this video, we will explain Kill It. This serial tells the story of a man named Kim Soo Yoon who works as an elite assassin. Soo Yoon kills his targets and disappears. His real identity such as age or name is unknown to others. Individuals, gangs and criminal organizations worldwide hire him as a hitman. Although he is a cold-blooded killer, but deep down, he wants to get affection from other people. Therefore, he is determined to find his family, even if he has to kill someone else in return. Can Soo Yoon rediscover his family and uncover his past? Let's find out and kill it. Kill It begins by showing a flashback where Soo Yoon, still a child, is trained to become a professional assassin. Young Soo Yoon has amnesia and is abandoned. A man named Pavel then accommodates Soo Yoon and tells him that his father tried to kill him. Pavel trains Soo Yoon with a lot of discipline to make him a trained assassin. In between his rehearsals, Soo Yoon secretly inquires about his past, where he finds a photo of a little girl who is his best friend. Pavel, knowing this, snatched the photo and tore it up as he is worried that they will find out that Soo Yoon is still alive. Long story short, Soo Yoon is now an adult and has become a professional assassin. Pavel then returns Soo Yoon's old photo and reveals that in fact he had been ordered by his father to kill him. However, Pavel chose to let Soo Yoon live and accommodated him. One day, Pavel and Soo Yoon get a job to kill a Russian crime lord named Karamov. But on the other hand, Karamov's son, Karamov too notices Pavel's disguise and rushes to catch him. Pavel is captured and brutally tortured, while Soo Yoon manages to kill Karamov. Soo Yoon kills all Karamov's henchmen, saves Pavel, and then blows up Karamov's residence. However, Karamov's son, Karamov too survived the explosion. When they reach their hideout, Soo Yoon tries to treat Pavel's wounds. But he stopped him. Pavel then apologizes to Soo Yoon for turning him into a murderer. At the end of his life, Pavel hopes that Soo Yoon can continue his life as an ordinary person and feel the love of others as he had longed for. Even though he is not related by blood to Pavel, Soo Yoon is very sad and devastated by his death because for him, Pavel is the only family he has. After Pavel's funeral, Soo Yoon gets information from Philip's broker, who informs him that Karamov too is still alive. He is now targeting Soo Yoon to avenge his father's death. But Su Yoon managed to escape from Karamov too and his henchmen. Philip then tells that there is a client who can help Su Yoon to find his family through an old photo that he has. But the client asks him to kill several people in exchange for information regarding his past. Su Yoon seems to consider it for a moment. But then he commits to uncovering the past and finding his family. Two years later, a man is seen hunting deer in the forest. However, unbeknownst to the man, Su Yoon is at his spot, hunting for him. After successfully knocking the man down and disguised as if the man fell off a steep cliff, Su Yoon then injects the liquid into the man's neck and leaves him to die. It is known that the man is a company leader who is involved in illegal activities such as drug trafficking. A female detective from the police force named Yoon Jin is then assigned to investigate the case of the man's death. While investigating at the crime scene, Yoon Jin finds several irregularities and concludes that the man's death was not due to an accident but was killed by someone. However, Yoon Jin still couldn't find evidence of someone's involvement in the man's death. While on her way home from the scene, Yoon Jin accidentally runs into Soo Yoon, disguised as a defender of animals. Yoon Jin then helps Soo Yoon catch the deer that tried to escape while Soo Yoon was treating her. Soo Yoon then gave his business card to Yoon Jin, if at any time she wanted to ask for compensation for her scarf that was stained with the blood of the deer. Su Yoon disguises himself as a veterinarian and passionate animal lover to hide his identity as a hitman. Su Yoon opens a practice and lives in a building that he rents from a girl named Min Zi. On the other hand, Yoon Jin is having dinner with her partner while discussing the case of the death of the deer hunter, where she suspects that the death is part of a serial murder, where previously she found several similar cases where the victims were killed by fluids used for euthanasia. Yoon Jin also suspects that the perpetrator of the murder of the deer hunter may be the same person involved in a murder case nine years ago, in which the only eyewitness in the murder case is a little girl named Kang Sul Ji, who none other than Min Zi. That night, Su Yoon gets a job to kill another target, who turns out to be Yoon Jin. On the other hand, Yoon Jin accidentally bumps into a cat while driving. She then remembers about Su Yoon who is a veterinarian. Yoon Jin rushed to the address listed on the business card given by Su Yoon to save the cat. 
Soo Yoon is very surprised when she sees Yoon Jin coming to his place asking for help. As a professional veterinarian, he rushes to treat the injured cat and save it. Soo Yoon did not ask for payment for his services as a return because Yoon Jin had helped him. Yoon Jin then meets Min Zi and decides to rent one of the apartments there, where she and Soo Yoon will now be neighbors. But Min Zi doesn't like Yoon Jin's presence and thinks she and Soo Yoon have a romantic relationship. One day, while walking home alone, Min Zi is confronted by a group of her uncle's men who intend to take her home to continue her family business. Soo Yoon and Yoon Jin who saw the incident tried to save Min Zi. After rescuing Min Zi, Yoon Jin then asks about the relationship between Soo Yoon and Min Zi, which seems more intimate than the relationship between a landlord and the tenant. Yoon Jin has dug up information about Min Zi whose real identity is Kang Sul Ji. When she was a child, Sul Ji was abused by her relatives who were jealous of her wealth, which she inherited from her late parents. Yoon Jin thinks that Soo Yoon wants to protect her. On the other hand, Min Zi turns out to be eavesdropping on their conversation and is furious at Yoon Jin for trying to dig up her dark past, which she wants to bury deep. Soo Yoon then reminds Yoon Jin not to try to dig into other people's pasts because everyone has their own secrets and traumas. Not long after, the police are investigating the illegal activities of gangsters in a building. By cutting off communications throughout the building, Yoon Jin sneaks in there pretending to be a technician. Unexpectedly, the gangsters turned out to be part of a criminal syndicate led by Karamov II who came to South Korea to hunt down Soo Yoon. Karamov II and his henchmen intend to kill Yoon Jin because she has learned of their illegal activity, namely kidnapping and drugging women. On the other hand, Soo Yoon turns out to already know the whereabouts of Karamov II and intends to kill him. Soo Yoon managed to save Yoon Jin who was almost killed by Karamov II's men. After Soo Yoon distracts the gangsters into chasing him, Yoon Jin then chases after Karamov II who is trying to escape. Soo Yoon can easily defeat Karamov II's men, while Yoon Jin manages to corner Karamov II on the roof of the building. When Karamov II was about to shoot Yoon Jin, Soo Yoon came and saved her. Karamov II then rushed away from there. A chase between Soo Yoon and Karamov II ensued until he finally trapped Soo Yoon in a speeding car and managed to escape. After that incident, Yoon Jin became very curious about the figure of a man who had saved her when she faced Karamov II. When Soo Yoon treats Yoon Jin's wound, he sees the figure of Karamov II who apparently already knows his disguise. Worried for the safety of those closest to him that might be in danger after Karamov II discovers his disguise, Soo Yoon then hands Min Zi a whistle for an emergency. Not long after, what Soo Yoon was worried about happened. Karamov II appears there and attacks Min Zi. Luckily, Soo Yoon immediately came to her rescue after hearing Min Zi's whistle. Soo Yoon and Karamov II engage in a fight, where Soo Yoon then slips a tracking device in Karamov II's jacket. The attack by Karamov II leaves Min Zi in shock as she remembers her past. Soo Yoon then tried to calm her. Soo Yoon then hunts down Karamov II and finds his hiding place. They get back into the fight, and Karamov II tries to frame Soo Yoon. But the plan fails, and Su Yoon shoots Karamov too, killing him. Afterwards, Philip tells Su Yoon about an orphanage that may be linked to his past. To confirm this, Su Yoon rushes to the abandoned orphanage, where he then remembers that he was a victim of bullying at the orphanage. Not only that, but he also remembers the little girl who also lives in the orphanage and befriends him. On the other hand, Yoon Jin also came to the orphanage to investigate the case of the disappearance of the head of the orphanage. In fact, Yoon Jin turns out to have lived there too, and she's the little girl Su Yoon used to be friends with when they were kids. Yoon Jin always hopes to be reunited with the boy who was once her best friend. She remembers that living in the orphanage was like living in hell, where they were always tortured and forced to work. But Yoon Jin always tries to survive, especially after meeting a boy who later becomes her best friend. Yoon Jin and her best friend always communicate using paper planes. One day, Soo Yoon gets a call from his client asking him to kill Yoon Jin. Because he refuses, the client threatens to kill those closest to him. Sure enough, the client then tries to bump into Yoon Jin who is about to cross the street. However, Soo Yoon who knew about it then rushed to save Yoon Jin. Knowing that the safety of those closest to him is starting to be threatened, Soo Yoon is forced to continue his work. 
This time, he is assigned to kill a man named Seo Won Suk who turns out to be the head of an orphanage who is reported missing and has changed identities. On the other hand, Yoon Jin who managed to get information about Won Suk was also interrogating Won Suk. Yoon Jin witnessed how Won Suk was killed in public by a sniper. She searches for the sniper's whereabouts and finds a suspicious looking mysterious man who is none other than Su Yoon. Yoon Jin rushed after him and cornered him. However, Su Yoon manages to turn things around and handcuff Yoon Jin before she breaks his disguise. Su Yoon then realizes that his client is most likely nearby to keep an eye on him because the client can often tell who the people around him are. Su Yoon then begins to pay attention to the people who often come to his veterinary clinic and the neighbors. That night, Su Yoon, who is investigating Yoon Jin's background because the client targeted her, decides to follow her mother to her house. Su Yoon immediately realizes that Yoon Jin's parents' house is the same house as seen in the old photo he has. Yoon Jin turns out to be adopted by a rich businessman named Du Jae Hwang, who turns out to be the mastermind behind the incident behind the closing of the orphanage where he came from. Slowly, Su Yoon's past memories come back. It turns out that the orphanage will kill the children who live in the orphanage if the foster parents do not adopt them. The orphanage will take the children's organs and sell them to sponsors. Knowing this, young Su Yoon tries to escape from there. However, Jae Hwan discovered his action, who caught him, and planned to kill him. Jae Hwan then sends Pavel to kill Su Yoon. But Pavel feels sorry for him and chooses to accommodate Su Yoon. Thus, Su Yoon finally discovers that Jae Hwan is actually his father and the girl in the photo is his sister. Su Yoon realizes that his sister has long since passed away, so his mother decides to adopt Yoon Jin and raise her. Jae Hwan wanted to kill Su Yoon because he was born by artificial insemination. On the other hand, Jae Hwan who knows that Su Yoon is still alive, then arranges a plan to frame him. Jae Hwan plans to use his assistant, a woman named Jiayi, as bait because Jiayi is proven to have betrayed by spying on Jae Hwan and providing information regarding his illegal activities to a man named Ko Yoon Woo, a professor who once worked at the orphanage. Professor Ko turns out to be a client who has hired Su Yoon in exchange for information about his past. Knowing that Jiayi is in danger, Professor Ko then sends Su Yoon to where Jiayi is being held hostage. But apparently, Yoon Jin also came after getting information about the children's skeletons found there. Seeing Su Yoon's car, Yoon Jin called him, to which Su Yoon reasoned that he was looking for abandoned dogs around there. Not long after, suddenly Yoon Jin was attacked by Jae Hwan's henchman. Hearing Yoon Jin's screams, Su Yoon rushed over and saved her. When someone tries to stab Su Yoon from behind, Yoon Jin immediately saves him, even though she has to be injured by being stabbed by a knife. Su Yoon rushes to call the police and takes Yoon Jin to the hospital. Knowing that the police will be there soon, Jae Hwan and his henchmen rush to escape from the place. Yoon Jin managed to survive because she did not get a fatal wound. While investigating Yoon Jin's room, Su Yoon finds Professor Ko's name and tries to find out about the man, of whom Professor Ko is an artificial insemination specialist. Su Yoon recognizes Professor Ko's face, who turns out to be a man selling plants who live nearby. Professor Ko has been spying on him using a bug hidden in a plant pot. Su Yoon then goes to Professor Ko's place and corners him, where Professor Ko tells Su Yoon that Jae Hwan was deliberately holding Jai Yi hostage to lure the two of them away. Su Yoon intends to kill Professor Ko, but suddenly Min Zi appears, so he then refuses to do so. Min Zi then reveals that she has always known about Su Yoon's identity as a hitman. Nine years ago, Pavel was the one who had killed her grandfather and Su Yoon was assigned to kill him. However, Su Yoon decides not to kill Min Zi out of compassion. Min Zi then realizes that Su Yoon actually has compassion, even though he is a murderer. Therefore, she has never revealed Su Yoon's identity to anyone and wants to always be near him because she feels safe if Su Yoon is by her side. Yoon Jin secretly investigates Su Yoon's veterinary clinic and accidentally finds a secret room where he keeps all the weapons and equipment he needs to support his profession as a hitman. However, what surprises Yoon Jin is the paper airplane she finds in Su Yoon's desk drawer, which is the letter she sent to her best friend when she was still living at the orphanage. Yoon Jin finally finds out that Su Yoon is her best friend who she has been missing so much. 
Su Yun and Yoon Jin finally meet and Su Yun reveals his reason for always being around the orphanage is to restore his memory because he once had amnesia. On the other hand, Min Zi is suddenly attacked by Jae Hwan's henchmen who are trying to locate Professor Ko's whereabouts. Knowing this through the camera in his car, Su Yun rushes to save Min Zi. While being treated at the hospital, Min Zi tells Yoon Jin that she is very worried about Su Yun because he has always fought, risking his life to protect those closest to him. Yoon Jin then gets information that Jai Yi was found dead in her car. Yoon Jin finds out that there are some irregularities in the death of Jai Yi who is her father's former personal assistant. Yoon Jin thinks Jai Yi's death has something to do with Professor Ko. Elsewhere, Philip, who managed to get information about the hospital affiliated with the orphanage to perform organ transplants, which is none other than the hospital headed by Jae Hwan, then informs Su Yoon, where he rushes to the hospital. Su Yoon then finds a secret lab at the hospital, where it is used to conduct experiments related to artificial insemination. Su Yoon then calls Jae Hwan, threatening him for information about the whereabouts of artificially inseminated children. After that, he blows up the lab, destroying all research data on children as well as Jae Hwan and his gang's illegal artificial insemination. Su Yoon manages to find the children's whereabouts by trailing one of Jae Hwan's henchmen. After killing Jae Hwan's men there, Su Yoon then asks Yoon Jin to take the children to a safe place. Su Yoon then tells Yoon Jin to take care of Min Zi because he intends to take revenge on Jae Hwan and stop him and his gang from doing so that no more children are born just to be killed. Yoon Jin tries to prevent Su Yoon's desire for revenge, but Su Yoon has made up his mind. After that, Yoon Jin, who managed to find incriminating evidence, then arrested Jae Hwan on murder and human trafficking charges. Su Yoon then goes to Professor Ko, who tells him that it's useless to arrest Jae Hwan because he will be released soon. Professor Ko insists that Jae Hwan must die if he wants it all to end. Not long after, the police came to Professor Ko's residence, where they were ordered to arrest Professor Ko. Su Yoon who was there then rushed to run away. Sure enough, it didn't take long for Jae Hwan and his gang to be cleared of all charges and walked away from the police station. Knowing that he might not be able to come back after taking revenge on Jae Hwan, Su Yoon then calls Min Zi, asking her to protect herself and not depend on others. Afterwards, Su Yoon barges into Jae Hwan's place after he is released. Su Yoon can easily beat Jae Hwan's henchmen. However, when one of Jae Hwan's henchmen tries to kill Su Yoon, Philip gets there just in time and sacrifices himself to protect Su Yoon. Su Yoon goes head to head with Jae Hwan, where Jae Hwan is immediately desperate and begs for mercy to be kept alive. When Su Yoon was about to kill Jae Hwan, Yoon Jin and the police rushed over and tried to stop him by pointing a gun at him. However, Su Yoon is determined to end it all, at which point he shoots Jae Hwan killing him. But at the same time, the police also open fire at Su Yoon, killing him. Yoon Jin who saw Su Yoon's death in such a tragic way, could only cry bitterly because now she has lost the only person who is most valuable in her life. The film ends by showing Yoon Jin and Min Zi who are in a park where they are both trying to move on from deep sorrow after the death of Su Yoon, someone who has always protected them and is willing to do anything for their safety. Yoon Jin smiles sadly as she holds the paper airplane she gave Su Yoon when they were little. The moral we can learn from this film is to respect every birth and life that exists on this earth, because God has predestined their birth, and it is not appropriate for us to take the lives of others, let alone just for our own sake.